Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to the introduction to the three days fasting and prayer for July 16th, 17th, and 18th of 2021. Hallelujah. Now, the theme of this fasting is strongholds are tumbling down. And our main scripture is 2 Corinthians 10.4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Precious saints, there is a spiritual battle for dominion and authority upon the earth at present, and it is only heating up more each day. It is a battle between good and evil, right and wrong, and we are seeing a shift taking place within this hour from an international, national and local level. Never before have we seen how the enemy is blatantly coming out more aggressively and openly. Isaiah the prophet spoke of these very days of pandemics, rumors of war, deceptions and natural disasters, etc. According to this scripture, Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Even though it is speaking more of the great tribulation to come, precious saints, and the Antichrist who is still being restrained by the church, but that is empowered by the Holy Spirit, according to Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. We also, as the remnant church, we are preparing for the glorious rapture of the bride. We can stand in the gap to see God's kingdom come. Because according to that scripture in 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 and 7, And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. The mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So essentially, the stage and the culture is being set up right now, precious saints. As you read this, as you come to read the program today, you will see that the Antichrist is preparing to take his seat of authority at the appointed time. And you only have to see the unrighteousness and wickedness that is growing day by day. We can see today an increase of horrendous crimes such as murder, rape, theft, aggravated assault, abductions, ritual abuse, pedophile attacks, human trafficking, and the abuse that has skyrocketed. The courts are full. The prisons are overflowing more now than ever before. And this corruption that starts from the very top. We have propaganda media and politicians telling us half-truths and in some cases straight-out lies. You have even said to yourself on many occasions, what is going on in today's day and age? Knowing that with the recent pandemic, Our freedom that we once took for granted seemed to be slowly taken away from us and feeling that a very new dispensation is about to start. Yes, and you'd be right in thinking and sensing in the spirit the shift as it is all just preparing the culture and stage for the Antichrist to be revealed, precious saints. There is a ferocious battle for righteousness within each nation across the face of the earth right now, precious saints. For we have things in the natural, for instance. Laws are being passed each day. 
that are an abomination to God and in many cases are there to silence us from speaking the truth. Truth has become an offense to many that hear it, who have become even void of it or indifferent to it. Isaiah the prophet spoke again of what was to come according to Isaiah 5 verse 20. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Paul also warned Timothy about the perilous times and perilous men that would come in the future. According to 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 6, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins led away by various lusts. The church of Jesus Christ is the beacon of light, but in some cases that light has faded out. The church is an embassy representing heaven within each nation. Now, I'm not just talking about the established church in big buildings, but rather a church that has been called out from amongst this world system. For each born-again Christian is an ambassador for Jesus Christ upon the earth, precious saints. For Paul confirms this in 2 Corinthians 5.20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's steed be you reconciled to God. See, we're in a spiritual battle today that requires a lot more grace, precious saints. We are moving into a new level, and this brings a new level of opposition. For the hordes of hell are being released upon the unrighteous, with many being used to bring about the enemy's agenda upon the face of the earth. Therefore, we need to make a stand in prayer like never before, precious saints. Matthew 11:12 says this, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. What is happening around us requires us to stand more firmly in the Lord with the pressures around us and this world system. According to 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 to 5, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our war are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. See, our faith in God's spoken word releases the power from heaven that binds or ties up the evil that we are facing. Now, in the same way, when we lose something on earth, we permit and declare it proper and lawful on earth. According to Matthew 16 verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on the earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth will be loosed in heaven. So everything that we loose or bind must be in accordance with God's word. There are so many things that we pray for and we wait for God to respond when in fact God has already told us what to do. 
He has already given us the strategies against the enemy's thrones, altars, and gates that we need in order to succeed in the spiritual warfare. God is not going to come to earth to do the things that he has already given the church the authority or the ability to do precious saints. That is what binding and loosening is all about. Now using spiritual authority, we already have and carry out the work of the kingdom. We are up against a very well-organized demonic army that has its own hierarchy and levels of satanic authority. These authorities can be set over empires, cultures, nations, and regions of the earth. They can be behind natural and supernatural government. So let's look at this. We see Satan. He is the commander in chief. We see thrones, we see dominions and lordships, we see principalities, rulerships and princes, we see powers which represent authorities, we see rulers of the darkness of this world, we see spiritual wickedness which is wicked spirits in high places in according in that second heaven. See, let us look a little further into this demonic hierarchy to understand a little more. Territorial spirits, demonic powers, they are, that have been given controlling influence over specific sites, peoples and areas. The belief in such hierarchical uh, arrangements is culturally widespread and often involves protective deities linked to homes, temples, clans, cities, valleys, and nations. So what about principalities and powers? They are demonic agents and structures that exert deceptive control over human political kingdoms and systems. A principality is defined as a state ruled by a prince and usually a relatively small state or a state that falls within a large state such as an empire. See, the position of authority of a prince or chief ruler, sovereignty, supreme power. So a principality is actually not a fallen angel itself. A principality is the seat of authority or the region that the fallen angel has authority over. A prince rules over a principality. Daniel chapter 10 makes it noticeably clear that fallen angels and angels from God are both called princes. Because according to Daniel 10 verse 13, it says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now let's look at powers. Powers, these are the sergeants that carry out the orders from the princes and pass down to lower ranking demons. Let's look at rulers of the darkness of this world. These are demonic forces involved in deceptive and destructive manipulation of natural elements and systems. Where are the rulers in the heavenly places according to those second heaven? Yes, so yes, there are hindrances, but when we walk in the finished work of the cross, precious saints, we can overcome all adversaries. Whenever you reach a mountaintop or are about to break through, Satan tries to stop you. But when the cross was lifted and the enemy was defeated, precious saints, that's right, when Jesus went to the cross, the enemy was defeated. When he rose on the third day, that was a greater rising. Therefore, the Lord calls us out from the valley of despondence and, and desires to place you on the heights with him. Just like the eagle that is unbeatable from higher altitude, the Lord is calling us to discern the times that we are living to equip ourselves for the battle that is ahead. 
So you may be asking me then, what about repentance revival that you always talk about, Pastor? Well, let's first look at what demonic hindrances are that come to stop revival. See, principalities over cities, regions, and nations are hindering revival. These fallen angels promote dullness, darkness, and spiritual lethargy. The reason the church is not experiencing open heavens is because of these angels. Principalities will not face their final judgment until after Jesus returns to the earth. However, they can be temporarily judged at times in this age. A fallen angel over a region or country may be bound for such a time if the courts of heaven have so deemed it so precious saints. So imagine a powerful great revival started in Argentina in the mid-1900s because the principality was bound over the nation in prayer. People were suddenly open to the gospel. Pastors and evangelists were moving in remarkable miracles. People were rushing to meetings, crusades, and churches to be healed and to be saved. The nation went from being hardened to the gospel to being open to the gospel. It was like a light was being switched on. Once the fallen angel was bound, the heavens opened over Argentina and light shined all over the nation. Binding the principality is a major key to revival pressure saints. And God can also do great things through the remnant church that will cry out to him in unity for revival. So in these three-day fasting program, we will tackle spiritual forces that are combating our lives and those around us. So I encourage you to put on the full armor of God this weekend on all that we do as we go into warfare this particular weekend. See, the month of July I want to encourage all to participate of this particular event at whatever capacity, whether you fast from one meal a day, whether you do a full fast from start to finish, whether you do a partial fast, please, whatever it is, just participate of this program as we're going to go deeper and further into the things of God that you may grow in understanding precious saints this recording was done to help you follow the program because it's all on text for you as we participate as i go to the prayer mountain to seek the lord praise the lord precious saints this is pastor robert clancy from narrow path ministries in perth western australia it is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom.